All right, here's the last real problem, the non-extra credit problem on the Fall 16 Math 111 final exam. Uh, we're given a rational function in its factored form. And we're first asked to determine the end behavior of this guy. So what you have to notice is that I have a third degree polynomial up on the top, two of them from here and one of them from this factor. And I have a third degree polynomial down on the bottom here, one from here and two from here. And anytime the degree of the polynomial on the top and the degree of the polynomial on the bottom are the same, we're always going to have a horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote determines my end behavior. And the location of that horizontal asymptote will always be the coefficient here divided by the coefficient here. Um, so if I were to find the unfactored form, if I were to multiply this all together, I would have, maybe I'll even write this, this is negative 3x cubed and then some other stuff. And down on the bottom, I would have 2x cubed and then some other stuff. And so the polynomial up top will act like negative 3x cubed and the polynomial on the bottom will act like 2x cubed when my value of x gets really large or really large negative. And that will act like negative 3 halves. What I'm saying is as x goes towards infinity, the y value will go towards negative 3 halves. And as x goes towards negative infinity, the y value will also go towards negative 3 halves, aka, you don't have to write both of these, there is a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 3 halves. So either this or this completely describes the end behavior. Determine the y-intercept of f. The y-intercept of f happens, it's the output when the x value equals 0. So change all those x's into zeros and see what number you get. Negative 3 times negative 1 squared times 3 divided by 2 times 1 times negative 3 squared. Well, up top here, this is positive 1. Positive 1 times negative 3 times positive 3 gives me negative 9. Down on the bottom, this is positive 9 times 1 times 2 gives me 18. So I get negative 1 half as my y-intercept. Determine the x-intercepts of f. Uh, to figure out the x-intercepts of f, I have to figure out what values of x will make the top equal 0 but will not make the bottom equal 0. So positive 1 will make the top equal 0, and negative 3 will make the top equal 0, but neither of those will make the bottom equal 0. So x-intercepts, um, maybe I'll even write 0 divided by some number, and that happens when x equals, what did I say, 1 and 3? 1 and negative 3? Does f have any vertical asymptotes? Well, vertical asymptotes when you have a, happen when you have a non-zero number divided by the number 0. So are there any values of x that'll make the bottom zero that won't also make the top zero? Well, negative one will do the trick. That'll make this factor zero. And positive three will do the trick. And neither of those will make the top zero. So I have one at negative one and I have one at positive three. Um, there could have been, oh, I wrote that in the wrong spot. That should have been up here. x equals negative one and maybe, or I don't care, x equals 3. Then the last question, does f have any holes? Well, holes are the values of x that make both the top and the bottom equal 0. We're supposed to figure out where they are. Well, in this case, there aren't any, uh, because there are no numbers that make the top 0 and the bottom 0. None, uh, because there are no numbers that make both the top 0 and the bottom 0 simultaneously. So that finishes this problem. You'd think I'd stop the video here, but I'm not going to because the extra credit problem on their test was to sketch a graph of this guy. Um, and that doesn't necessarily have to be extra credit. That's something that I think you could do. That could be on your test as a normal problem. But for theirs, I think we learned this really late in the term and they didn't really have time to get into the graphs of these things. So I told them it would be extra credit on their test, but that's not a standard thing. You should make sure that you know how to graph these things. So I'm gonna graph it down here. I'm gonna graph this rational function. So for the end behavior, I remember there had to be a y-intercept at negative, or sorry, a horizontal asymptote at negative 3 halves. So if this is negative 1 and this is negative 2, eventually I want to kind of zero in on this tight here. That's not part of my graph. I also want to make sure that I have a y-intercept of negative 1 half. So I want to go through this point right here. And I want to make sure that I have x-intercepts at positive 1 and negative 3. And the one at positive 1 has multiplicity 2. So I have an x-intercept here at positive 1 and here at negative 3. Uh, and this one I want to bounce off and this one I want to go right through. 
And then finally, I want to have vertical asymptotes at negative 1 and positive 3. Remember that true-false question that said you couldn't or asked if it, were, if it was impossible to have both a vertical and a horizontal asymptote? Uh, certainly not impossible. In fact, here is a case. So sketch this graph. Well, if it goes through this point right here, it must go down on this vertical asymptote. Remember that it bounces off here at 1, and that's because that root had an even multiplicity. So that means it must also go down at this asymptote as opposed to going up. Now, what about over here? We'll have to end up with a height down here at negative 3 halves and have to go through this intercept. So what that means is that it, my graph must come from up here. In other words, it must go up at this vertical asymptote before it levels off at negative 3 half because it has to go through the axis exactly once. Um, so it couldn't possibly start out down here and go through this and end up at negative 3 halves. Similarly, over on this side, I don't have any more x-intercepts, but I do have to end up at this asymptote, so it must start out down here and look something like this. There weren't any holes, so I don't have to worry about that. This would be a very approximate graph of this rational function.